In this episode we'll be talking about the current state of design within the US government, we'll talk about the value of design for governmental agencies and finally we'll discuss the challenges that are associated with bringing in a human-centered design approach into government. Here's the guest for this episode, let the show begin. Hello, I'm Janine Ray and welcome to the Service Design Show. Hi, I'm Mark and welcome to the Service Design Show. This show is all about helping you to design services that have a positive impact on people and business. My guest in this episode has a passion for antique sports cars. She loves to mentor young staff and she's currently in a leadership position for the CX practice at Deloitte in Washington. Her name is Janine Ray. In the next 30 minutes or so, Janine and I will be talking about the current state of design within the US government. We'll discuss the value of design for governmental agencies. And finally, what are the challenges that are associated with bringing in a human-centered design approach into government? We post new videos every week here on this channel. So if you want to level up your service design skills, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to click that bell icon so you'll be notified when new videos are out. So that's all for the introduction and now let's quickly jump into the interview with Janine. Welcome to the show, Janine. Happy to be here, Mark. Great so to see nice you. to see you again after I think uh, eight or nine years uh, when we met in The Hague. It was a long time ago and that was, uh, that was a really great moment for me. Lovely mm. to be there. You're right now in Washington, I'm in Utrecht, uh, so uh, it's a pretty big distance. I'm happy that we made uh, this interview happen eventually. Janine, um, uh, you've been a pioneer in the design field for a very long time, and I'm really curious, do you remember the first time you heard about the term service design? Oh, gosh. Uh, well, mm. I remember the first time I ever worked on a journey map. That was a very long time ago when we were working. Mm. When I worked at IDEO, we worked on the, a train project and we were doing the customer journey around going through the station and and um, getting on the train and off the train and so forth. And that's where I first learned about service design and, and these kind of tools. So I think I've fallen in love ever since. And then you know, when the internet was invented and there was also, you know, services, it was clear there was going to be a lot of services associated with the, the, you know, then products, the internet of things could be seen then, I knew it was going to be pretty big. And uh, I think I was right on that one. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, uh, your days at IDEO, how, how long is that ago? It's a long time ago now, more than 15 <laughs> years. I can't remember mm. exactly when. Yeah, it's been more than 15 years. So the firm has changed a lot. And I've had a lot of opportunities in between, but uh, never wavered from loving design, that's for sure. Mm. Um, we're going to talk about some really interesting uh, uh, topics. You sent me three of them. They are all government related, so that's, that's going to be the central theme of this episode. Uh, I've sent you a few question starters and we're going to uh, improvise or do some interview jazz like one of the previous guests said. Are you ready, Janine? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. okay, let's go. Here's topic number one. <laughs> Drum roll. Topic number one is called the state of design. Do you have a question starter and can you show it to us? Uh, yeah, I mean, the question starter is what is the state of design in the, in the, in the government space in the, in the United States right now? So I don't know that I'm a complete uh, 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 expert on this, but I'm in the market every day and working with people that are working with government agencies every day, both on the federal and the and the state level. And I say, I would give us a report card of maybe we're sort of like a B minus in terms of understanding design and using design. I think we have a long way to go, uh, certainly to catch up with some other countries that are more switched on about it. But, you know, like three years ago, you could, you could go to a conference and never hear the word human-centered design. And today, all executives that are at the podium in the customer experience world that I inhabit are talking about human-centered design as being a key enabler to understand government problems and to be able to solve them. So that's the really, really good news that there's a lot of momentum going on around that. Um, when they talk about design, it's not so much around calling it service design. Mm -hmm. I think we're just trying to understand design and design thinking. And, but the service design tools uh, figure prominently, things like you know, field research and 
journey mapping is very big because, of course, uh, you know, end to end experiences are very important and people are starting to understand that better. Uh, looking at the different kinds of people and using personas and then, of course, being able to come up with ideas and prototype them rapidly and test them mm. uh, is all is all very popular and being recognized in a in a big way. I'd say also that um, a lot of um, a lot of the work in design is going on in digital. So within the U.S. government, there's the U.S. Digital Service and there's also a group called 18F that works with government agencies to improve their online experiences. So that's been uh, a, a really a big force in the government in improving services. Um, but I'd say they don't really get to the depths that service design does in trying to understand the backstage of the other mm -hmm. workings of not just the internet and how um, how um, those kinds of things are working, digital services are working, but other services that include, uh, you know, a lot of people. There's a lot of people. There's a retail environments. There's there's all kinds of environments within the federal space that um, are not digital. And I think that's one of the things that attracted me most about coming into into the federal space and also working for Deloitte because the, the this firm does as any does everything that can be integrated and that's what service design is all about to a large extent for me. So whether it's a human capital problem, a technology problem, strategy problem, et cetera, um, they can all be um, addressed. And I thought I'd be in a quite a nice, you know, sandbox to be able to do um, a breadth of work that has, you know, that's, that's not always the digital component to it, but there are other components as well. That mm. is really, uh, it's really something I'm enjoying. The I'm really curious. Do you see you see that uh, you're saying that there is a lot of momentum? Uh, do you see um, uh, differences in who's really on the forefront of adopting the human-centered design mindset uh, within the government? Are there certain areas, uh, buckets? Yeah. Well, I think the the agencies that are doing well have have had some experience with it. For example. Um, the, the Veterans Administration here is an enormous agency. It provides veterans to, you know, millions and millions, tens of millions of veterans, a huge sprawling system of health care and benefits and other, and other things. And a few years ago, they did a very notable project um, that had um, where the entire system was mapped. And they really got to understand what human-centered design was about. Uh, and service design was bad in every single way. And they have mm. continued to be a leader and continue now to teach other people what they've, what they've learned. So it's sort of like get your toe in the water and, um, and uh, learn what it's all about. We have those springing up all over the place now because uh -huh. people are, uh, have gotten past their first project and now they're seeing how they want to do things and training people internally and so forth to do things. And uh, that's what's constituting a lot of, a lot of momentum because there's a lot of transformation work going on. And with that comes the, the uh, opportunity to you know, look at things, reframe things, and um, to be able to improve things. And there's a very big interest from this administration in getting good at customer service and customer experience. And we always hear we should not have, you know, we should have the same level of customer experiences that you would have on the, in the commercial sector. So that's kind of the North Star. And I think people mm. really understand that because consumers' expectations are based on their common experiences, whether they're dealing with a bank or, you know, an online service or something like that. And uh, I think uh, government leaders know that they've got to be on par with those or sort of they're going to be losing out. So it's been, uh, there's there's a lot of reason to go there for sure. Hmm. And um, from the experience that you've had in the past one and a half, two years, uh, what are the biggest differences that you see in um, uh, between the adoption of design within the federal government and, let's say, the commercial sector in the U.S.? What, yeah. what are the biggest differences? Well, you know, in the in the commercial sector, it's all about the competition, and and many mm -hmm. if you look at uh, you know study after study after study where executives are saying that experience is going to be the main battleground for competition in 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 the future in the commercial sector. In the federal sector, in the government sector, it's very different. Um, the whole idea of competition doesn't exist as much, um, but there is a big interest in being more productive uh, mm -hmm. and also very mission focused. So to be able to do your job better than you could ever imagine doing it, 
um, those are the things that are driving um, an interest in, in, in design methods. And, um, you know, we just have to get more and more uh, people on that wavelength because it's in the, in the federal and government sectors, it seems like it's just not enough to have customer satisfaction. We need other stuff too. We want to have other benefits from it. It does require change management and it, it does require some bravery and risk taking to do us, do things differently. Um, but I think, you know, I think we're there and we just sort of need to be able to, you know, uh, apply it more in more cases, mm. for example, mm. in the areas where there are new, um, IT systems coming on board, you know, it used to be people would just get the contract and they'd start coding on day two, you know, and, and today <laughs> what we need to do is really go out in the field and understand who are the users that are going to be using the system, who are the other stakeholders, what do they want and pulling together the, the real life stories of people and getting the team that's going to be um, creating something like that, uh, a technology solution to really understand what is the what is the productivity and other things that are trying to drive out of this? Who are the people that will inhabit and use the system? And then how do those things, you know, contribute to, um, you know, mission effectiveness? So there's, there's mm. a, it's, mm. it's fairly complicated, but uh, very exciting at the same time. Um, we talked about transition already in the last 10 minutes quite a lot. Uh, so let's transition in topic number two. <laughs> okay. And that relates to, to what uh, we've been talking so far, and that's, uh, that's the value of design. And then again, the question to you, do you have a question starter that goes along with this topic? <laughs> well, I mean, I would say this and then say also, you know, what is the value of design to government agencies? And, you mm. know, I think the, the, the first thing is, of course, putting the user at the center of the equation. And so most legacy systems that are out there, um, you know, probably the vast majority are legacy systems have been designed from the inside out rather than the outside in. That meaning that it's been optimized around the organizational effectiveness and not necessarily mm. around the people that are gonna be using the system. So that's a very important big change and a huge amount of value that can be applied to big, big systems. Not necessarily just all computer systems, but there are other systems that have lots of moving parts that have you know people that are doing things or training that needs to happen or other things that need to, you know, that make up a, a, a make up a service. So um, uh, that's really important, putting the user at the center of things. Um, also, I think um, design helps build an integrated view of all the moving parts and all the pieces that you need in order to be optimized to do, you know, what you want it to do. So it, it helps with the visualization of what is it that, um, uh, that, that we're trying to achieve. And then also there's that end-to-end -end things, particularly in the service design world. So many times in these big environments, like you think about, you know, just something like paying your taxes, you know, there, there are lots of silos that can happen within that mm. environment. And the service design tools help people see what is the end-to-end -end and where are things, um, you know, what's important, what's the most important things, where are the priorities, that go on for people that they couldn't necessarily see in their own silo. So I think the whole visualization of, of, of um, things with design is extremely important and something that's, you know, kind of lack, we, we lack a lot of skill in that here in this kind of environment because, you know, you have your management consultants and you have your technology people and so forth, but not a lot of artists and other people that can draw frameworks and, and yeah, do yeah, you know, yeah. catching all the things that you would want to do as a part of the creative process of getting into an answer or just coming up with ideas. That's, um, you know, that's uh, something that we need to do uh, more of, in my opinion, because we can mm. make decisions so much faster. Exactly. It helps to make more informed, smarter decisions. Um, so right. you, you, you just said... Um, that design or customer experience isn't the, you know, it's not a competitive advantage within the government, of course. Um, so what is driving this momentum of design? Is it productivity? Is it mission? Is it something? What? Yeah. What is driving it? Well, um, what's driving it is an opportunity to do things differently. Innovation, mm -hmm. really. I think people are are, um, you know, we have a lot of new technologies and new thinking and new perspectives and expectations. And so I, I think there's an interest to be able to become relevant, to actually, you know, uh, make citizens happy. You know, one of the things that uh, is uh, very big in the government and people that I've heard talk 
about this. There's a general distrust of government, of the government right now, in general. I don't care if you're on the state business or the federal business, mm. if you're a congressman mm -hmm. or you're a person, that's on people's mind. And so mm. to be able to have a, um, uh, you know, a, a fluid, pleasant experience with a government service is uh, really kind of unusual. You're used to hang-ups. You're used to things being yeah, a hassle. Yeah. You know, so, so I think that's one of the big things that people in power really want to do is help people trust the government more by um, them understanding what their need states are and being able to deliver on that, which is not so easy in this very bureaucratic sort of large large environment. It's fairly complicated when it, when it gets down to doing things, much more complicated than uh, than anything I've ever encountered in my career. Right. So uh, this this is uh, like a really noble goal in uh, increasing the trust in the government. Um, and I would say that's a really hard sell. You know, um, why are people suddenly interested in actually putting money into this? Well, it's because they are putting money into it. There's a whole lot of things going on in um, in technology modernization that just has to happen. It's, it's amazing yeah. to me how much COBOL programming language is still being used in <laughs> government environments. And 40 so years everything later, yeah. got to become, you know, things are going to the cloud. Things are, things are changing. Those environments are changing. And, you know, you don't want to, you, you don't want to recreate a bad process. And so, you know, people that are, mm -hmm. that are uh, managing those things realize that. And, uh, you know, they know that, you know, that it's important to put the users at the center of the problem and they, and that's where they're, you know, starting to incorporate a lot of a lot more of this content into their into their into their projects than ever before. So um, <clears throat> that sort of explains it, I think, to a certain extent. There's, you know, there's a lot going on and um, uh, and a lot of momentum around that. But it, in in part, and also, I think people are talking about agile and agile methods and mm -hmm. design thinking. And agile methods go together really well, um, and um, you know, that's part of it too. It's now. Agile really does uh, expect you to work in a certain way, and it's very much, you know, very much in keeping with how d the design thinking philosophy goes. With you know, trying to do uh, very rapid iterations and put the user in in the middle of the problem, and and, and those kinds of, of things. So that's on people's minds as well. Mm. So, so um, what I'm also hearing is that we're sort of in in a few cases piggybacking on the fact that we have legacy systems that are being uh, innovated, renewed, and uh, that creates an opportunity to sort of look at these systems from a new perspective. Right, exactly. Yeah. And, you know, they impact people all over the, all over the country um, that are trying to get things done every day. And, um, you know, you, sometimes you hear these ridiculous things about certain people having to, you know, drive four hours to do to show up at an office to do things when they could actually do it via email or do it via video call or something like yeah. that. And so there's lots of common sense things that just have to, you know, come up to uh, the current level of technology and uh, people's expectations, because, you know, that kind of thing, if you think about somebody having to drive four hours to an office and drive four hours back, that's an entire day of time. You know, that's, that's, mm, uh, mm. you know, that's really inconvenient. And so I think um, there's a very big interest in helping helping alleviate a lot of those situations and also just in general make it a better uh more solid experience dealing with um dealing with government services no matter whether you're you know going to the dmv and your state or you're you know dealing with the irs or some other uh, other service like you know the, the, some of the bigger ones that we have going to a state mm -hmm. park you know, or, or 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 something along those lines all those things are um are, are part of the parcel of the of the work that gets done, and it's uh, it's quite exciting actually. All the things that uh, we encounter, that um, you know, that that need that are very important to us all as as as, uh, as citizens, and and that we have certain expectations about how they should be done, and um, and you know, people are really trying to get there. The, one last question regarding the value uh, of design is um, you contributed to the um, uh, Design Management Institute. What is it? The Design Index? Yes, the Design Value Index. Yeah. The Design Value Index. I think almost everyone who's watching the show or listening to this episode knows it. Um, it was uh, focused on the stock value of commercial companies. Is there? Yes. Are you working on an uh, equivalent for federal or governmental services? Um, well, I, 
I'm, those kinds of things go through my mind because I like to analyze things and uh, what we need to sort of converge on or what, a, what, a, what are the things that we can index around. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. that really, you know, come, come to me yet, but there's a lot of work going on in customer experience and trying to, uh, trying to bring those numbers up. And also, um, we haven't really talked about this, but very, very important in these big government env- environments is employee experience. And so mm. design methods and service design methods can be used against that as well. And there are um, there are a lot of um, indicators around um, around the value of employee engagement and so forth that go on here. So I, I think maybe in the next few years, we might come up with something like that. Um, I don't know if any other countries have done that, but um, that would certainly be um, on my mind to sort of find out if anybody has a similar kind of kind of index for government services. But soon the government is going to be able to tell you their satisfaction scores and those kinds of things, which will be a huge, a huge start because they we really don't have, um, you know, a comparable set of numbers being picked up, um, you know, by the agencies themselves. Uh, and that's going to make a huge difference. And mm. I think because- Make everybody yeah. a little bit more motivated to get those those scores up, because you will have a score. Now there are no scores, uh, so so yeah. Well, many- well, what gets measured gets done eventually. So uh, yeah, yeah. Um, that's for sure. Let's move on into the third topic, uh, and that is, of course, I would almost say um, this one: the challenges. And then again, the <laughs> question: Do you have a question started that goes along with the challenges? Oh gosh. Um, yeah, well, I'll have to do, I'll just have to do this one again, but go ahead. Um, yeah. What are the challenges associated with this, uh, this kind of transformation that, that's mm. going on? It, it's not uncomplicated. Uh, and I think it's going to take many years to, 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 uh, to have the same thing. Now I started in the design business when not very many people understood design. So, so that's happened quite quickly and much more quickly in the last 10 years. So I think it took a while, it may take a while to get the ball, uh, rolling, but Mm -hmm. I think it will get there eventually. Um, when I think about, you know, maybe the biggest challenge, especially in government services, there's just kind of a lack of awareness, um, what about the value of design. So the things that we've just talked about, um, you know, it's not walking around knowledge, not common knowledge. People don't necessarily think about it. They don't, you know, they don't, it's not in their kind of world. And so building awareness around these things is, is very important. And, uh, and I think for, especially in the customer, ex- customer experience world, you know, that's, that's been done there. Is, you know, you can't go to a conference where people aren't talking about design, but if you went to a conference that was an IT conference or security conference or something like that, and people were talking about design, that would be uh, probably a new a new thing. So we just need to sort of build awareness, and, and, and that's one of the biggest problems. Um, also, you have to kind of change the processes people are used to. So one of the things about getting design going anywhere, really, is to be able to open up the process to be able to des- for design to do its work. For example, you know, when um, you say, well, I want to go do a three months of, of customer research. I want to go to various parts around the country where these things, I want to understand what the users are doing and bring that information back before we start to, to do anything. You mm-hmm. know, that's that may not be, um, you know, well understood by the person that you're trying trying to convince. And just <laughs> as that, there's more collaboration, more uh, workshoppy kinds of things, more kind of um, uh, low fidelity prototypes that prove out uh, concepts and and get people talking as you know as communication devices and so forth. That's all kind of foreign to this environment. And so you know more of that kind of stuff is going to be um, is going to is going to uh, help. But you know you can't. What is the expression? Uh, you can't make an omelet without breaking an egg. You know, like you have to change the processes up a bit and people's expectations around what gets what gets done and and mm. and convince them it's valuable. So that's another thing. Um, um, in the government environment, a couple of things go on about procurement. So it's uh, procurement processes as they exist right now don't really recognize the you know human centered design or service design i think it would be the most unusual thing in the world to see a, an rfp about service design coming out of the out of the government and so you know that's kind of a, a problem because um, the people that write those things who you know they're they're you know rooms full of people that do nothing but write procurement and uh, yeah, work on yeah. that may not really understand how this is done and um, um, 
you know, that's kind of a, a, a challenge. So what's, the challenge in, what, what's the challenge regarding uh, procurement? Well, there, you know, it's just not called out as part of the process, you know, normally. So, you know, whether you're, you know, no matter what you're doing, if you're trying to fix a recruitment problem or other kind of employee experience problem or an IT problem or something that has to do with, uh, you know, um, uh, fixing um, the, you know, retail environments or something like that, it would be unusual for that uh, RFP to come out like, we want you to do customer research. We want to... Mm. You know, we have all these expectations. It's getting better, and um, people that are in the space um, do their share of kind of shaping those things and influencing how the best way to do something is. There's trade associations that help um, uh, bring that together, but it's, it wouldn't be the common uh, intuitive thing at this point. So, you know, that's that's a time that we have to do. And then just the people that know how to do the work that are in the community and the government contracting um, community is, is very small. And so, you know, when I was, when I was in the commercial sector, I would often, you know, hear people talking about doing, doing government work and they'd say, Oh my God, no, that's such a hassle. I can't, you know, Mm. do that contracting work. I can't be in the market. I mean, there is something about being in the market every day that is, um, uh, you know, that, that helps you sort of understand and stay and step with things. And there are not that many companies that have, uh, you know, the talent and the scale to, to, um, to work on some of these things. So I think that's, that's a, that's a problem too. And I, I've also, you know, heard that, that, um, they're working on that. I mean, people that are in, um, the office of management and budget and the general services administration have recognized that, you know, the, the, the talent is in the small business community and to try to get them more, uh, involved is, uh, is an important aspect to it because not all, you know, big companies, don't really have, you know, design consultancies within them. Oftentimes, they do some mm-hmm. other function. Um, that's a, that's a challenge as well. So there's quite a few there's quite a few challenges. But you know, where there's a will, there's a way. And I think you know, it comes back to who are the people that are really trying to change things, and and what are they open to do? And those are the people that I think are going to really be the movers and shakers and the change uh, the change man uh, the, mm-hmm. the, the change, change agents in this environment. So if, if we fast forward like uh, five years and think about uh, the new challenges, what will the challenges be in five years' time, you hope? <laughs> what, what will uh, the new challenges be? Well, you know, I mean, in, in terms of just keeping up with things, you, you know, you see what's coming down in terms of, um, uh, you know, mobility. Uh, a lot of the tech stuff, you know, like... Um, driverless cars, all those kinds of things are going to have a huge impact on uh, on how the government needs to operate. You think about, you know, drones that are flying at the border, for example, or, you know, any number of like, you know, security threats or other mm-hmm. things that mm-hmm. we're having to deal with. A lot of it has to do with, you know, just technology being so much more accessible and not having this, you know, that used to be that you had to have a lot of of, um, you know, hardware, big computers, all that kind of stuff to, to do anything. And today it's all, um, you know, very accessible by the, you know, average small company or something like that. So just keeping up with all that and being able to just keep up with it, much less be in front of it is, Mm. is going to be a challenge and it's going to continue Mm. to be a, um, a challenge. But, you know, like, like I said, there's a lot of smart people out there that are trying their, their best, best to do it. And they get a lot of inspiration from, from, from people that are challenging them every, every day. So, um, you know, being, I think being agile and being able to pivot very quickly, uh, to new things, uh, because new things arise every day, um, and that the government has to do to, has to deal with. So that's a, that's an important thing too. Just don't get too set in your ways of, of doing things. You've got, um, uh, an audience listening and watching to you right now. Is there something that you would like to ask us? Do you, uh, us, do you have a question for us? Something that you'd like to know or that we can think about? Uh, well, you know, for me, I would, um, I would love to, to stand on the shoulders of other people that have been in, um, in government environments where design has been a big enabler for, um, for the things that we talked about, mission effectiveness and, uh, productivity uh, and just you know better services delivered delivered to customers and so I would love to know 
you know, more case studies. We're we're attempting to write a little piece about service design in the in the government. We've already pulled together about forty government case studies on service design, oh, wow. and they're trying to make some sense about you know why do you use service design and um, yeah. and what are the what are the best uh, places to use service design. Um, service design isn't new, but you know, uh, in the government space, um, just understanding where it's appropriate and really value added is important. So any kind of case studies, uh, or, or other things about how do you, um, how do you spread, um, the use of human centered design and service design in these kinds of environments? I would be all ears like that. For sure. Boom. I, I know that there's a lot of expertise uh, around that topic here in this community. And uh, regarding the case studies you were talking about, what is, are you planning to make a publication uh, around this or? Yeah, yeah. Deloitte has uh, something called the Center for Government Insights. And so we're working with leaders in that organization to sort of pull, pull, those, pull it together in a way so that it will be, yeah, it'll be shared. It'll be a, an article that will be shared through that. And, uh, and hopefully it'll be an important uh, a uh, new piece about, you know, when do you use service design? I mean, I think for service designers, they kind of know when to use service design, but it may not be that clear <laughs> It's not for us, yeah. yeah. Or have, you know, have some of these issues and they, they don't know. Well, why don't we try service design here? Because that seems to be um, the thing to, that will help us not only understand what the, what the front end, the, the front stage needs to be, but also what the back end needs to be. And, uh, you know, putting all those things together at one time is an efficient way to, to actually, you know, make something happen. So, mm. um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm hoping, I, I, I don't know what the time frame is for that, but I, I know it will happen. And I know that most of the research is, is done and we could use more, more case studies, uh, in service design and government settings to add, to add to that research. All right, cool people. Uh, this is a call to action. Contribute, leave a comment, connect with Janine on, uh, on LinkedIn. Janine, I want to thank you so much for sharing some of your thoughts and the things you're busy with. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to see where you will be in like uh, 18 months from now, what has changed. So uh, again, well, uh, thanks. I'll have a lot more designers around me. We're starting to hire uh, uh, folks and and uh, it's going to be very very exciting I've been I have now a design studio here that we're working in every day and you know integrating more and more with the digital studio and so forth so it's been very exciting not you know not just the the work but how it's how it's coming along and I, I'm so thrilled that Deloitte's leadership is very switched on about this and enabling it to happen so I feel very cool. proud cool again Great. thanks so much Janine thanks so much Okay, take care, Mark. So do you know any examples where design has been used within the government? Leave a comment down below or connect with me or Janine on LinkedIn. If you enjoyed this episode, please click that thumbs up button. I'd really appreciate that. And it helps to spread the message on YouTube about this episode. And if you know someone who might be interested in what we've just discussed, grab the link of this video and share that with them. If you want to learn how to explain service design in a quick and compelling way, make sure you sign up for the free course that I've got for you over here. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.